Okay, we're gonna move on to the chassis um, and the brakes. Now, first thing you're gonna wanna uh, check is the front forks. You're gonna wanna make sure that they don't leak and that when you push them down, they spring right back up, okay? And then you're gonna wanna check right around here. You're gonna wanna check for any cracks or anything like that, anything that would indicate that this thing is a little bit old and it's gonna have to be changed and that no oil comes out of this. You're also gonna wanna check to make sure that your key on the other side of this bike is the, the lock for the handlebars, make sure that that lock's not broken. That's an, actually an anti-theft device is what that is. And then what we're gonna move on to is the brakes. See if you can see this. Now, when you're checking the brakes, your brake pads on the front caliper should not be less than an eighth of an inch. They should be between uh, eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. So if they're a little bit low, you can tell the guy, you know, it can be one of your little checkbox things that you end up negotiating with. Uh, you also want to check the rotor and you want to make sure that there's no, no uh, deep grooves in the rotor at all to make sure that's good. And then take a look around the caliper and make sure that uh, you, don't, you don't see any leaking brake fluid anywhere. Follow the hoses up. Make sure everything looks good. Follow it all the way up to the brake, which is right here coming off your brake reservoir. Check this hose going all the way down. If that looks pretty good, all you have left to check is, is the rear tire, but I'm gonna have to spin the bike around to show you guys that. All right, now, what I wanted to show you was right here on the back of the drum, you don't have to take this off to be able to check the brakes. If you see this thing right here with the little arrow on it, and this piece, if these pieces line up together, then the, um, the brake drum needs to be changed. So the way you check that is you just go up here to where the brake lever is, you push your foot down on the brake lever, or you push your hand down on the brake lever, and you go back here and you check, and you see if this thing lines up with that. Because if it does, then it's bad. If you see, it doesn't move very much, but it should not line up with that. And if it does, that means that the brake, uh, the brake drums need to be replaced. And that's gonna cost you more money on your checklist. And then you just end up uh, saving a few more dollars. All right, the next thing you're coming to is the wheels. Now on the wheels, you want to check to see if there's any bumps or bulges along the side of the tire. You also want to check um, to see if there's any cut slits or cracks in this tire. And you want to see if there's any uneven wear, as though, you know, someone had to skid or stop really fast and, you know, all, all this stuff, all, all it means is that you're going to have to buy new tires eventually. Um, dry rot usually occurs along the side of the sidewalls um, and that's you know another good tool to be able to get a few bucks off the price um, because you have to buy new tires. Another thing you want to check with the tires is this cap right here. A lot of people don't even think about this but the little cap that you fill up the tires with air pressure if the cap is missing all that means is that this guy has to uh, fill his tires all the time. And it doesn't feel like, you know, so if it's missing, that's probably why. And if it's missing on this one, more than likely it's missing on the back one too. And while you're here, you want to check all your spokes. Make sure none of them are loose. You want to make sure there's no dents in the rim. And then you go check the back tire with the same thing. You want to make sure that you can't wiggle the back tire to give you an indication of this is a lot easier to do on a center stand okay but you just try to wiggle it and see if it 
if these bearings down here are bad. And you want to check for the same thing. Check for any bulges, dry rots. Uh, check all the spokes to make sure they're not loose. And on the front, this, if your bearings do go bad, this will be the easiest place to find it. At the bottom of both of these forks, there's bearings that connect the wheel. You can take the front wheel, try to wiggle it while it's on the forks and see if it's loose. And if these bearings are bad, this front wheel, the, I mean, you want it to wiggle like this, but I'm saying within the forks. And if, if that's bad, that means that this bike has incredibly high mileage. I'm talking, you know, at least over 25,000 miles on the bike. And uh, that's another good way to check, you know, if the odometer's telling you the truth. All right. Okay, now for the drivetrain, what you want to check, you want to see for the, uh, the slackness in the chain, you want to be right here at about the middle. And to give you a good indication, this on your finger is an inch. So you want to make sure that it doesn't go more than an inch. You want to check the chain for any kinks in it. You want to see if there's any of the little O-rings missing. You want to make sure that it's not rusted and that it's well lubricated. And what you would do is you would have the seller walk the bike or maybe a friend that you had with you and you guys could walk the bike and then you could, you know, look at the entire chain. Another thing you want to check on this is the sprocket itself. These teeth on the sprocket, you want to make sure that none of them are broken and none of them are unevenly worn and, uh, and they all look good. But now this right here is the actual chain indicator. right here and if this is past the point like it'll tell you if you have to replace the chain but they have markers up here also and if this there's a little notch in here if that's actually put back farther because what happens as the chain gets hot it stretches so you have to continually you know change this or you know tighten it a little bit and at some point the chain's going to be stretched too much to where it won't be stretched again and you'll have to replace the whole chain which is not what you want to do because, uh, you know, from what I understand, they're not very cheap. At this point, you're pretty much almost done with the whole inspection. The last thing to check is the exhaust. And what you're going to want to check is on the bottoms of these pipes, is there any type of, you know, is there any rust at all you can feel underneath them? See if there's any rust on the pipes. When it's actually running, you're also going to want to check for not only the pressure coming out of the pipes, but you're going to want to see if it's blowing smoke because if it is blowing smoke, well, all that means is that you have a valve or you have a piston, you know, a ring around the piston that's gone bad. That's going to mean major oil, you know, you know, money to fix. So, you know, move on to the next bike and don't waste your time. But what I'll do is I'll go ahead and crank this up for you real quick. what you want to feel. You put your hands behind both pipes and you make sure that it's giving you equal pressure out of both pipes is what you want to look for. You make sure you don't have any scratches, all the bolts are tight, um, you know, and everything looks good. And other than that, if you're clean coming out of the exhaust, you have no rust on it, uh, you're pretty much good. Uh, other than that, there's just really one thing left with the inspection and this is probably the most important thing because if this bike does not put a smile on your face when you ride it don't buy it Woo!